I'm Nick, and this is quite possibly the most absurd motherboard you've ever seen. This is the Gigabyte X870E Aorus Extreme X3D AI Top, and it's absolute mouthful to say. The story behind this motherboard is Gigabyte said to its engineers, hey, uh, let's just get every single feature you can possibly imagine and just whack it onto one motherboard and make it extremely expensive. That's why it's called the Extreme. So let's take a bit of a closer look. This one is a bit of a doozy. This video is brought to you by VIPSCDKey.com. Have you ever installed Windows 11 only to see the watermark of death? You don't need to fork out a couple of hundred dollars for a key. You can grab one from today's video sponsor from VIPSCDKey.com for a tenth of the price. You can use our code GEAR to get 30% off for this month only. How good is that? That takes that already cheap Windows 11 key and makes it even cheaper. It's easy as placing your order. Bingo bango! You've got your new key on your orders page. You chuck that key into the activation screen and you're good to go. No more watermark of death. Use code GEAR to get 30% off for this month only. Link in the description. On with the video, back to you, Nick. All right, here it is, the Gigabyte X870 Aorus Extreme X3D AI Top. As you can see, the box here is absolutely massive and it's big enough to smash the overhead camera, but let's uh, take a look at what's inside this box. First of all, there's a kit with this. I'm not sure if this comes with the retail packaging, but it's got 32 gigs of V-Color memory at 8,000 mega transfers included in the box. But again, I'm not sure if the retail version does come with this. I have heard that it does, but yeah, again, not sure here. As you can see, the packaging here is absolutely over the top for one of the most over the top motherboards you'll ever see. Uh, let's get that motherboard out of the way so we can take a look at all of the things that come with this board. And I got to say, guys, it's a lot. And first of all, there's a cup. Yep, you heard that right. This motherboard comes with a sippy cup. Uh, this is kind of cool. This is something that I'll use, but yeah, weird that it comes with one. It also comes with a weapon, sorry, a bottle opener, just in case you wanted to use your sippy cup for some wine, I suppose. Not really my cup of tea. <laughs> that was a joke. All right, there's a bunch of thermal probes that are included with the motherboard, as well as some Velcro straps for some cable management. There's lots to go through here, guys. There's also this little cover here. This is for the RAM. This is a cooler for the RAM. This basically just sits on top of your RAM and it's got an active cooler. I'll show this more in a moment. There's also this little ditty here, which hides all of the PWM fan connectors. It does come with a G connector as well, but as you're about to see, this motherboard has lots of little proprietary integrated ports, especially for those PWM fan connectors, because they are 12 in total with this board. It is absolutely jam-packed. There's also one of these USB Type-C DACs. Gigabyte tends to include this on their top end boards. And I think they've done this for, I'm going to say the last seven or eight years. So yeah, I bet you they made like a hundred thousand of these and they just need to get rid of them somehow. There's also a lot of other things that comes with this board because like I said, it is jam packed. We've got the Wi-Fi 7 antenna for the built-in Wi-Fi 7 on this motherboard, as well as a bunch of breakout cables. This is breakouts for the RGB, as well as USB 2.0 front panel breakouts for things like your liquid coolers, anything legacy that needs USB 2.0 or liquid cools or anything like that. Like I said, guys, I'm going to keep saying it. It's absolutely jam-packed. Not only that, it also has the front panel headers that connect to a little breakout cable as well. This is pretty standard for Gigabyte's Extreme motherboards. There's also a set of SATA or SATA cables for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your three and a half inch drives. There's all of the documentation that you're going to need to get up and running with this board. Now, I have mentioned this in the past with these new Gigabyte boards, but all of the drivers for the networking are in the BIOS. Once you get Wi-Fi or Ethernet connected, it will download the drivers automatically. There's also this massive M.2 heatsink, which I'll show in a moment. This thing is almost like a CPU air cooler in itself. It's absolutely massive. It's also got a massive heat pipe and a huge fin stack. Like I said, we'll come back to this in a moment. There's also a contact plate. This is very interesting that this is included with the motherboard. Essentially what this does is it allows you to remove the factory mounting and retention system and use this in place of it to hold the CPU down. This will typically give a more even surface for cooling, but also a bit better thermal conductivity if you're looking at doing something exotic with the cooling on this motherboard. That's kind of what this board's designed to be, right? Basically, anything you can imagine that they would design for a motherboard, this board just comes with it. And finally, the best inclusion ever, 
that Aorus case badge. All right, let's unsheath the X870E Aorus Extreme X3D AI top and take a look at what's on the board because like I said, guys, I'm gonna keep saying it, it's absolutely freaking jam-packed. We've got the header for the breakout for the front panel connectors for all your lights on your switches. We've got two USB 3.2 headers as well as headers for basically everything else that connects to the boards. You've got your RGB breakout front panel. You've got the breakouts for the rest of the stuff on the board as well. These include the cables that only plug into these headers. So you can see that they're different sizes. So the corresponding connector will go in there. There's also two SATA or SATA ports for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your three and a half inch hard drives, as well as a USB type C front panel header, an eight pin PCIe power connector, this is for PD charging for that USB Type-C header. There's the 24 pin power connector to send juice to your brand new motherboard. There's a USB Type-C port. There's two PWM fan breakout headers as well as a PWM fan header. There's also another USB Type-C header hiding next to the RAM slots as well. Next to that, there's a reset button, a power button, and a smart button you can map as well. This is pretty standard on these extreme boards from Gigabyte. To get to the top headers and connectors on the board, there's a magnetic cover that can just be popped off quite easily, and that will expose two more PWM fan headers on the top, the LED demo header, which I use to light the board up when we're filming videos like this, as well as two temperature headers to use with the included thermal probes. To send juice to your CPU, there's also two 8-pin EPS power connectors. The first thing you'll notice is you can only see one of the PCIe slots on this board. You can remove the cover quite easily. Everything on this board is magnetic. It just pops up. You can lift that away from the motherboard and it'll expose all of the PCIe slots. There's a PCIe Gen 5 by 16 slot up the top. The next slot down is a PCIe Gen 5 by 8 slot, as well as a PCIe Gen 4 by 4 slot right at the bottom. Both of the PCIe Gen 5 slots have a little quick release button for each of the slots individually. The top slot is just a quick release. The bottom slot is a toggle, which will lock the card into place. And you can see how these mechanisms work right here. The VRM layout on this board is pretty crazy. It's got a 24 plus 2 plus 2 phase VRM setup. And the 24 phases are a 12 plus 12 phase parallel power design. And all of the phases except the last two phases are 110 amp smart power stages. You can see that there's a massive heatsink for the IO cover that will help for the VRM cooling, as well as another heatsink at the top of the board. And both of the heat sinks are connected with a heat pipe. The elephant in the room with this board is that IO cover. It does have a five inch screen, which you can put basically anything you want on it. But for the purposes of this video, I'm not showing anything on the display here because I haven't used this board at the time of filming. Because this is an AM5 board, it has a standard AM5 socket with standard AM5 cooler mounting. But as usual with our motherboard videos, I like to pop the socket open just in case you've never seen inside of one of these sockets before. But chances are, if you're buying a board like this, you would definitely know what the inside of an AM5 socket would look like, right? It's an absolutely insane motherboard. If we flip the board over, you can see it's got a full cover backplate. It's not just aesthetic. It does help with cooling the backside of the board here. This board also features an eight layer PCB. As for memory compatibility on this board, it's got four DDR5 DIMM slots which will support up to a total of 256 gigs of memory at 9,000 mega transfers. Remember guys, that's a specification, not a recommendation. Getting better at that song every time. As mentioned, it does come with a cooling solution for the memory. What you want to do is remove this magnetic cover. It'll expose some magnets as well as some pogo pins for the lighting. And basically you just want to drop that cover on and it kind of locks into place with a satisfying snap. And you can see, as I mentioned, it is actively cooled and the fan is powered through those pogo pins. You can see the fan at the top of the shroud here. Storage is an interesting one on this board. Nothing on this board requires a tool. It is kind of nice to see that this is ubiquitous across this entire board. Basically to release the top M.2 heatsink, it's a button, you push it in, you can pop that heatsink away, and then you can release the other heatsink with a little latch, you can lift that away from the motherboard and this will expose all of the M.2 slots. There are five in total. 
There's two PCIe Gen 5 M.2 slots on this board. They're labeled with the little Gen 5 cover on the connector for each of the slots. And there's three PCIe Gen 4 M.2 slots. Interestingly, as I showed before, it does include a massive heatsink for the top M.2 slot. And the way this works is you would remove that heatsink like you would usually, and then you lock that big one into place. It does have lighting on it as well. As you can see here, guys, this heatsink for an M.2 slot is kind of ridiculous. It's massive. It's the height of some air coolers. It's pretty crazy. As for rear IO, we've got a Q flash plus button as well as a smart button you can map. There's an HMI 2.1 port, a line out jack, a microphone jack, SPDIF slash optical audio output, as well as a bunch of USB 3.2 ports. There's two USB 4 type C ports. There's dual 10 gigabit ethernet. There's the antenna connector for the built-in Wi-Fi 7 and some more USB 3.2 type A ports. I hope you guys enjoyed taking a little bit of a look at this board with me. There's a couple of things I want to chat about because it's kind of interesting in, in, in a way, I suppose. Well, you guys know with Gigabyte Extreme boards, they're always going to be really expensive. I don't know what the pricing for this board is in particular, but I'm, it's going to be over a thousand US dollars. And to be honest, I think this one will even be close to 2000 Australian dollars because the feature set for this thing is absurd, but it's not the only absurd thing about this board. Check this out. I want to show you guys the size of the box that this comes with. Now, I don't know if the scale came across when I was had it on the table before, but look at this. Right? This, this box, I'm not kidding, is the size of an MATX case box. I, I don't understand uh, this box. It's too big. Like the thing is with this motherboard, yeah, it comes with a lot of stuff, but um, I can't even store this motherboard box anywhere. So um, I'm gonna just have to use it and throw the box out. <laughs> so make sure you uh, subscribed and tuned in for all that stuff because you know how that goes. But speaking of this board and its absurdity, the feature set, guys, it's got a 24 plus two plus two phase VRM layout. It's got this magnetic, the magnets are really strong, mind you. It's got this magnetic cooler for the RAM with like active cooling, it's got a fan. It also comes with a memory kit. I'm not sure if the retail version comes with a memory kit. In fact, I'm not even sure that the retail motherboard box is that big. I'm guessing it still would be that big because it comes with a sippy cup. I, I've, I've never seen a motherboard come with a sippy cup and a bottle opener. Um, is this for coffee or is this for wine? Like, I don't know. Like, what do people, do people drink wine? I don't drink alcohol, so I don't know what this is for. Uh, yeah, this is uh, very dangerous. Um, it comes with that contact frame, which I think is something that motherboard should just come with or have an option to come with because it doesn't just work as a contact frame. It also works around some of the surface mount components that are particular to this board, which is a nice little addition. I think even though the price is ridiculous, this board is definitely not for you. Uh, it's insane and uh, I'm going to use it. <laughs> and the attention to detail on this board is ridiculous. And like I said, you don't want this board because you can't afford it. Like it's absurd. No one is buying this board, not for an AM5 CPU. They're just not doing it. It's completely over-engineered. It's massive, it's heavy, and I love it. You would buy it. If you were a Dubai prince, you would buy this. Like a Saudi prince, you would buy this board. Other than that, there is no reason to own this motherboard. If you're overclocking, it doesn't even matter. Like you don't need this. If you're doing stuff with AI, you're not using a desktop motherboard. Like you're just not using it because you want multiple GPUs, 
doing all of their things. You want more than two GPUs as well. This is the optional M.2 heatsink that this board comes with. Like, come on, like this is the size of an air cooler for a CPU. Well, not quite, but it's as tall as one. This is absurd. Like, why is, why does this exist? Like, this is a classic, um, I paid a thousand US dollars for this board, so we're gonna give you everything kind of move. Like, I don't hate it, guys. Like, the, the, the tone here may not be translating well, but I don't hate it. I think it's ridiculous. Is that cool? It's really freaking cool, but don't buy it because you don't need this. You don't, you don't need this board. It's stupid, but I love it. I love it. This is uh, the kind of tech stuff that I like to see is absurd, over-engineered. It's really cool, but you don't need it. You look like you've got a question. Where's the chibi? You're right. Where is the chibi? Where's the chibi? Where is the chibi? I have so many mixed feelings about it because like I said, you don't need this. Nobody needs this, but I'm glad it exists. Because the best thing about this motherboard is, you don't know the best thing, Claire. The fact that I know I'm gonna use this motherboard in a rack mount enclosure and it'll never be seen again. Like my um, MSI, the X870E Godlike that I've got, that's my gaming PC in a rack. People complained so much that I did that, but I'm probably gonna use this board for like my new gaming PC. I'll do it again. Yeah, like it, it's got active cooling. It's kind of perfect for a rack and mount. It's supposed to be used. It should yeah. be that you're using. It doesn't it. matter if it's got a screen that I'll never look at. I guarantee you guys, if you had this in a glass case, you still wouldn't look at it. You would you would turn on your PC and one of your friends would come over and you'd be like, look how crazy my motherboard is. And they, they would ask you, do you look at it? And you'd be like, absolutely not. Then why do you have it? Because I can. Because it's cool. Because you can, you can. Okay, the bottom line guys with this board is, it is crazily over-engineered. Do you need something like this in your life? Probably not. Is it cool that it exists? Absolutely. Will I be using this for builds? Yes. Will I be using this for a personal rig? Most probably because I think uh, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I love it. Your wallet won't love it, but uh, the idea of this board is what I think is really enticing about it. The idea that the just squeeze every feature you can imagine into a motherboard onto a single board is very interesting. Uh, financially, it's a very poor decision to buy this board. Here's the thing about tech guys. Sometimes I see stuff and I'm like, man, I'm so lucky that I get to do this for a job. And then I get to play with all of these insane things. Uh, I'm a little bit disappointed that I couldn't show the screen as I've already mentioned, but you'll see it when we end up doing a case review. I'll be using this probably in the next case review because I just really want to use it to see what the deal with that screen is. Yeah. All right. Uh, I guess I'm done. This is the first time I filmed in two weeks. So I'm just getting back into the groove because we've been in America. Okay.